and spend some time together looking at the Word. The title of the sermon today is it's, the, it's called, It's the Heart of the Matter. It's the Heart of the Matter. Um, like, we, like we've talked about already, we don't even know what this heart is. God says in his words we're going to read together. He says, guard your heart. Well, if we don't even know what it is, how do we guard it? Why is the heart really even important? If you don't know what it is, you can't see it. Why is it so important? We could go through the rest of our lives not really understanding the heart at all. Not understanding the importance of it. Let me tell you, if you knew the importance of the heart, you would guard it. Just like the most valuable things that you possess. Some of us in this room have children. Do you guard your children? Why do you guard your children? because they're extremely valuable. So if you understood the value of your heart, if you understood that, you would guard it with great vigor and diligence. You would guard it. But we don't understand the heart. We don't really know where it's at. We don't really know what it is. We just know that, as we talked about last week, that it's a treasure and you got to seek after it with everything you have. You have to seek after it. Now, by default, okay, and this is the way to think about it. When you're born, you were born, you defaulted to the flesh, right? Heart is the spiritual side. Heart is the side of God, spirit. When you were born, you defaulted to which side? Flesh, period. You didn't have to do anything at all, and you defaulted to that side. When you were born, you were flesh. So it is a journey. Are we good? It's a journey to move from flesh over to where God is, and that is spirit. It's a journey to go there. And if you don't do anything, if you're not diligent, if you're not intentional about this journey, by default, you're going to be flesh. You don't have to do anything for that. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to try. You don't have to do anything. Now, somewhere along the way, most of you in this room had a moment where you accepted Jesus as your Lord. What does that, what does Lord mean? Lord means that you serve him. You are a servant. That's, that's what Lord means, right? You're a servant to him. So at some point along the way, if you made a commitment for him to be your Lord, all I've got to say is prove it. See, that commitment, that commitment is not one little moment that you have where you maybe walk down the aisle and you, had a, you said this little prayer and now all of eternity is taken care of? Is that it? No. The commitment starts after that. When you confirm your salvation, you confirm it. You confirm it. It comes after that. So all of these millions and millions and billions that have had a moment with Jesus... And then after that, nothing else happened. After that, nothing else happened. There is no confirmation of their salvation. You see, what we're taught in Scripture is that when we become a Christian, when we accept Jesus as Lord, our heart, <clears throat> it's the heart of the matter, right? Our heart is softened. Our heart becomes an interesting phrase in Scripture. Our heart becomes alive and flesh. Y'all remember reading that? 
your heart which was once dead and hardened becomes alive and flesh. Did Scripture say your heart becomes devoted to Christ? Is that what it said? It's not what it said. It says the heart became impressionable. Do y'all know what that term means, impressionable? Anybody? You know what the term means? Impressionable. It can be changed. When a heart is hard, can it be changed? When the heart's hard, it's immovable, unchangeable. Nothing can happen. When the heart becomes flesh and softened, it means it's vulnerable. It means it's teachable. It means it's movable. It's pliable. And your heart is spirit, as God is spirit. Now, what happens? Got this, it's the heart of the matter. You got this heart. Did you know that everything you do, everything you say, everything that goes on in your life comes from your heart? It is the core. It is the origin of everything. It flows from the heart. And God says, I want you to live from the inside. Out. Flesh says, I want you to live from the outside. There is no inside. Spirit's dead. Flesh says, don't even think about the spirit. Don't talk about the spiritual. Don't worship in the spiritual. Don't do anything like that. It's all about external. With the Pharisees, it was all external. Jesus came along and he says, it's not what you eat. Why would he say that? It's not what you put in your mouth. That's outside, right? That's outside in. It's not what you put in your mouth. Jesus says, hypocrites, it's what comes out of your mouth that matters. Not what's going into your mouth because anything you put in your mouth just is going to go to your stomach and straight out your body. He says, but what's coming out of your mouth, what is that aroma? What's coming out of your mouth, what is the aroma? If it's trash, if it's ugly, if it smells that aroma, that tells you exactly what your heart is. It's the aroma. It tells you what your heart is from the inside coming out. It tells you what your heart is. Your attitude is the aroma of your heart. <clears throat> what is your attitude? What's your attitude about life? What's your attitude about people? What's your attitude about your purpose, your existence? What's your attitude about your neighbor? What's your attitude about people you run across on a daily basis, on the job? What's your attitude? Is the aroma of your heart. And God says, Guard that. Put up the boundaries. Do whatever it takes to guard that because that is where it all comes from. It's all coming from the heart. That place that you don't hardly know is there, you know, that place you hardly even know exists. You know, God is spirit. I hear that. I am spirit. I hear that. But do I know that? I mean, I just, I told you the guy I sat down with. This spiritual stuff doesn't even exist. Well, let me tell you, most people believe that. That, that all there is is emotion. But it goes no deeper than that. It's just emotion. When you die, what remains? Spirit. Heart remains. The mind remains. I mean, Without the brain, how do we think? Without the brain goes away. All the memory storage goes away. 
What's left? You still have your mind. What's the difference between the mind and the brain? Brain is flesh. Mind is spirit. Are they interchangeable? People talk as if they are. When you're talking to Jesus in the spirit, it's your mind talking to Jesus. It's not your brain. It's your mind. That's when you talk to Jesus in the spirit. That's living and walking in the spirit. Now let's just be clear. Maybe it's getting hot again. Let me see if I can find out why this is going on. I'm going to shut the whole thing down. this perspective. When you go between you and God, one-on-one, 4.30 in the morning, whenever that may be, when you go between you and God, personally, one-on-one, that's being filled with the Spirit. We're good? You and God, filled with the Spirit. Beautiful place to be. That only happens when you go before God one on one and I pray you do it every day I pray you don't let a day go by that you're not being filled with the spirit you don't get filled with the spirit instantly and stay that way the rest of your life it's every day be filled by the Holy Spirit but it doesn't say stop there you don't go into your place of quietness into your closet and stay in the closet all day that's called a hermit it's called a monk you name it, that has no, absolutely no interaction with other people. You know Jesus. Lots of interaction with other people. So there is being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then there is walking in the Spirit, right? Being filled and then walking in the Spirit. So let's get the sense of this. Being filled is between you and God. Your love for God and his love for you. Walking in the Spirit is your love for people. God says, only two commandments I give you. Love God. Love people. And this heart, when you go before God in the morning, you're being filled by the Spirit. And this heart, which is pliable, this heart, which can be very vulnerable, when you say filled with the Spirit, what, what, what is the heart getting filled up with? Love. It's a sack. Okay, it's a sack. And it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill your sack up. You fill it up with love. You fill it up with wisdom. You fill this sack up with understanding. You fill this sack up with discernment as you go through it. Wisdom for who? Discernment for who? Understanding for who? Insights for who? Other people. So you be filled with that which you need to have an impact on other people. So there is being filled with the Spirit, personal one-on-one -on -one time, that then fills this sack called the heart, full of being filled to the top, to the brim, exactly what Jesus did. He went out in the morning, he got filled up, and then he walked in the Spirit. And everywhere he went, he knew exactly who he was supposed to deal with. He knew exactly who he was supposed to heal. He knew who he was supposed to talk to. He couldn't talk to everyone. He could not heal everyone. Well, he could, but he didn't. He only did what the Holy Spirit told him to do. <clears throat> certain people he healed, certain people he talked to, certain groups he talked to. There were, there were crowd moments. Everything was done because he was filled and then he walked in the Spirit. Now let's go back to the commitment that you made 
and you said, Jesus, you are my Lord. I accept you as my Lord. You are now a servant. Did you understand when you said that? That that's a commitment every day? That you are a servant to him and no other? It's a commitment every day that he is Lord and that you're not. And you're committed to give and serve and surrender totally to him every day. That is the confirmation of your salvation. <clears throat> if you say, I committed to Jesus, and then every day after that, you live in your pleasures, and you live in doing whatever you want to do, and nobody tells you what to do, full of pride and anger and jealousy and greed, every one of those are flesh, and that's your life. And that's your existence. That is not confirming your salvation. Your salvation is confirmed by every single day of commitment for him to be Lord. And you start your day by filling your heart up. And then allowing it to manifest to other people as you go out during the day. That's exactly what Jesus did. And tell me, tell me one day you don't need to do that. Tell me one day you can take off. Just give me one day where I don't need to consecrate. You remember what consecration means? Y'all remember that? Consecration means every day you stop and say, Jesus, do whatever you want with me today. It does not matter. I give you me and you just use me. And say what you want to be said through me. Do what you want to be done through me, and I don't care what it is. It does not matter. That is consecrating yourself every day. So now you're filled with the Spirit. You're consecrated, and go out and sanctify other people. That's where those terms come from. Those little terms like consecration. Those little terms like sanctification. Where does that come from? What do they even mean? You know, for a long time, we've talked consecration and sanctification, and what, is those, what do those words do? They just go, shh, right? <laughs> right over your head. Consecration says you have taken that heart. It's the heart of the matter. It's the spiritual side of you. And you're filling it up. Because it's between you and God every morning. Every morning, folks. Every morning. How often? Every morning. You're filling it up. And then you're going out loving people. What do people do that don't have that? Don't, do they ever do good things? Philanthropists. Are they ever doing good things? It looks like they are. But let me tell you, they're not. You cannot do one good thing out of flesh. Even though it looks like it. The Pharisees, everything they did was flesh. And even though it looked good, even though they were meeting all these laws, they were accomplishing all of these things that they were supposed to accomplish and do all the things they were supposed to do. And Jesus said, you hypocrites. And that was a term that was worse than the worst. He never used that on anybody else but them. That's one of those terms that says really bad. You're faking. You're not real. It's not every morning that you go before God and it's just you and him spiritually. And you're being filled. And then you go out and care and love for other people because I can't do it. If I don't do that every morning, then it's me going out there trying to do good things, doing good works. People see me. I'm doing good things for God. I'm accomplishing all of these things. Look at what I'm accomplishing. Look at what I've done. Folks, that is flesh and it is misery. God says, you start being filled with the Spirit. You go out and you love and care for people through that divine power coming from the inside out of you. And I'll give you peace. I'll give you joy. You just sit back and enjoy it. He says, my yoke is easy and it's light. You are free. 
People, you are free. You're free from the bondages that are put on you when you're born. You're born into the flesh by default, and you are choked by it. You're in absolute bondage of it. He says you're free from it. Are you committed or not? Are, yes or no? Yeah, I can tell you what it means. You're asking the question. If you, you know, everybody will probably have an answer to that, but I have an answer for it. Good. Mine's just because it's a covenant promise. <coughs> and my covenant with my Lord is it's not on I'm going to do it every day. I'm going to do it every night. And at every stoplight. And it's a covenant promise. Hey. So. Perfect. <coughs> What's yours? Everybody in here. <coughs> Committed or not, total or not. This is not. Don't, don't misunderstand. I'm just sharing with you part of my life. I'm not saying sure. that what I do is good for anybody else. It apparently helps us another path to walk. But if he leads my path, I'm going to keep my cups. Yes. You know, I remember going through a time where I studied the sugar in our physical diet. Y'all remember me talking about it. I've talked about this a couple of times before. Where we uh, eat too much sugar. And it's called a sugar burn, meaning that we really burn hot. So our bodies, because we eat so much sugar, we're burning hot. And because we burn hot, we have a lot of inflammation. Right, brother? Yep. We have a lot of inflammation. And it's taken over our bodies, and we, we hurt a lot. Sugar causes our bodies to pain and suffer because we're burning too hot. Inflammation just kind of takes over. And we learn, as we study this, that it's better not to have a sugar burn in your body, but it's better to have a fat burn in your body. Fat burn means it's steady. It means it's cooler. Now, when it comes to spirituality, have you ever seen the sugar burns? These people are up on these highs and they are burning spiritually. And then they go straight down and die and they're way down here. You know, you know how, you know how it feels when you come off of a sugar high? I mean, you're in the ditch. Bipolar. And then. Yeah, that's a hard thing to deal with. It is tough. My wife says I'm about to half the time. See, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm, a I'm hard, serious. hard, hard, hard thing. The reason why you want to operate in the spirit and walk in the spirit is because it's a fat burn spirituality. It's consistent. Every day, it's consistent. The fruits of the spirit are flowing out of you. What are those fruits? Let me throw out some peace, love, joy, patience, patience, brother, kindness, kindness. gratitude, perseverance, gratitude, perseverance. gratitude. All of those fruits are now coming out. Now, does it matter where you came from? Does it matter where you are? Does it matter who you are? Does it matter what you've done? None of that matters at all. It's just you having a special moment between you and God every morning and being filled by the Spirit and letting the fruits soar. And all the junk of your past is gone. It's over with. And you're doing a fat burn spirituality. Fat burn. Consistent. Jesus was consistent in his walk. He still is. When he was on earth. Let me add that phrase. Consistent in his walk. See, it's all about the heart. Hearts fleshly and soft because of that moment we had where we accepted Jesus as Lord. Now, what are you doing about that? Where is this heart now? You know, it does say in Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful. It says in Jeremiah that the heart is dark. It says that the heart can be very deceptive. Unless 
So it can go either way, right? It's pliable. It's vulnerable. The heart can go either way. Except, except when you have those moments where he fills that heart up with the Holy Spirit. Fills it up. So you have to know, folks, you have to know that heart does exist. It is, it is sitting there. It does exist. It is real. And it can be filled up. If not, it can be very, very deceptive. Very ugly. Very dark. Even because he's made it plowed. It can go either way. Remember, your heart did not change when you accepted Christ and says, now it's fully devoted to Christ. That's not what Scripture says. It just says it's vulnerable. It's softened. It's ready to receive that which you call upon to come into your heart. And it says in Scripture, guard it. Because it's the most valuable thing you have. It's the only thing that you have that's going to carry you day by day by day. It is the core of your being. It's your essence. It is that which can carry you through some mud and darkness and deep, deep, deep issues physically. You've got some deep stuff physically going on, and I know every one of them in this room, including me, we have some deep stuff going on. The only way you deal with that is you go back to the heart, you fill it, and let it flow through you. Flesh is no longer in control. Flesh is no longer leading this game anymore. My desires do not matter. My flesh and what it screams for does not matter. The pleasures do not matter. Well, I do want a little, you know, each day, I just want a little of this. It doesn't matter. And let me tell you, when, when that flesh pleasure comes, heart problem. When that anger comes in your life, heart problem. When greed, envy, jealousy come in your life between what you have, don't have and what they have, heart problem. <clears throat> when your attitude stinks, heart problem. You get plenty of early warnings, folks. You get the early warnings. It tells you. There are plenty of early warnings. Are there not? You know it. When you have not filled that heart with what it needs to be filled with, do you know it? Yes. It will show up. The aroma will come. And what's the aroma like with a heart that is filled with the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit are coming out. And you have light in your eyes. I'll be the old eyes. <laughs> you have light. You have light. I was looking at somebody on YouTube the other day, this, this young lady, I, was, I saw the topic, oh, cool, I don't see that. Came up, you can see it in her eyes. How strange is that? You see it in her eyes. Most of the time, when I'm prepared on Sunday mornings, let me tell you, I have to be prepared. I have to, because I'm a fleshly human being. If I'm not prepared when I come in here, it's, it's over. Y'all know that. There's good days and bad days. And I pray that I sanctify, I pray that I consecrate before every Sunday when I come in here. <laughs> every day, but especially on Sunday. Especially on Sunday. So what if I just decided not to? <laughs> well, when I do, and I walk in here, it takes about 30 seconds to look in your eyes. Every one of your eyes. It takes about 30 seconds. It's not hard to see. If you look around, you fill yourself with the Spirit, you just look around. Do you know what discernment is? Y'all know what that is? You can see. You can see. Being filled with the Spirit having the fruits of the Spirit flowing, giving you discernment, giving you understanding. Understanding where people are coming from, brother. Understanding where people are coming from. 
discernment. You can look in their eyes and see. Well, I'm on the phone with them. You can tell by the voice. You can tell by the tone. It's the atmosphere. Man, when the fruits of the Holy Spirit are moving, just tell me one person on this planet that can deceive you. Name one. No one can deceive you. No one. No one can trick you. They can't play games with you. But let me tell you, if you don't, if you don't understand this heart and how important it is to guard it and fill it, if you don't understand that, you will be deceived and tricked by everybody you come across. Nobody can be trusted. <coughs> Nobody can be trusted. So that's the beauty of being filled with the Spirit and the fruits flowing. You are a trusted human being because of that. Without that, folks, if people are not doing that or that are around you, do not trust them. If they're not doing that, if they're not committed to this lordship, this, this thing they said a long time ago where, I'm committed to you, Lord. You are my Lord and my Savior. But this thing about feeling filled with the Holy Spirit every day, I don't know about that. Folks, there is no salvation for that. Are we good? That is not salvation. Salvation says you made him Lord and you committed every day. That's real. That's not a game. That's not play. That's not pretentious. I'm not here to question your salvation. I'm here to say, prove it. Prove it. Are you committed or not? It's the heart of the matter. Let's read some scripture. Let's watch it with scripture and make sure that we're on I'm going to go over and start with Galatians. When it talks about spirit, you know, we've got to start with Galatians, do we not? I'm going to start with Galatians. I'm going to go with chapter 5. And I'm going to look at 16 through 25. Are we ready? Electronic device is ready. Yours is being utilized. Everybody ready? You don't have one... You ready? I'm just listening. All right, you're going to listen? Yeah, here we go. What, what chapter would you say? Oh, five, chapter 5. 16 through 25. And I'm going to start at verse 16 and I'm going to run through 25. Everybody ready to listen? Here we go. So I say, live by the Spirit. So there's filled with the Spirit, and there's living and walking by the Spirit. Okay? So I say, live by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Did you hear that? That's a promise. If you do this, you live that way, you will not, you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. So if any of you want to get rid of some stuff in your life that's flesh, you live by the Spirit. And I've already talked about how you take that heart and mold it into that. That's why you guard it. Verse 17, for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. Spirit is always going to be over here, and sins are, and nature are always going to be over here. Opposites. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. So even though you want to do something good, you can't do it. If you haven't gone back and guarded your heart and filled your heart accordingly, you cannot do it. You cannot do anything good. You are not enabled. You're not given authority. You have no divine power. You can't do anything, even though it may look like you're doing great things. Are we good? It may look good. It is worthless. It says when you get to heaven, it's all burn up. And you're left standing there going, what just happened? Are you clear? Is there anything about this that's not clear for you? Be clear. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature. Okay, what does that look like? The sinful side, sinful nature. What does it look like? Sexual immorality. That's what that looks like. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, bits of rage, selfish ambition, 
dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are saved and you will spend eternity with Jesus, prove it every day. Committed or not. You're either committed or you're not. You know what he feels about lukewarmness, right? You know what he feels about playing these games. You know what he feels like putting on a show with the Pharisees. He's made it clear. Hypocrites. Verse 19. No, 22. Okay, so we know what that looks like now. Here we go. But the fruit of the Spirit looks like what? What we talked about earlier. Ooh, what does it look like? What does it look like? What's that? When that light comes in the eyes, what does that look like? Here we go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, wow. I had to throw that one in right at the end, didn't I? That's what it looks like when the when you start over here and the heart is filled with the Spirit and now you're walking in the Spirit. Your, yourself is under control. It's no longer leading the ship. Doesn't do that anymore. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with his passions and desires. They're dead. You commit, yourself is dead. You don't commit, yourself rules. Simple as that. Everybody good? Everybody good? Simple. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 Ephesians 5.18 reads this, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Folks, if you don't, if you don't understand this being filled with the Spirit, are we clear it doesn't happen without you intentionally doing something? Are we clear? Are we clear it doesn't happen once and for all? It's every day. Are we clear? <coughs> being filled happens every day single day. I'm going to move over to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Y'all probably have been in Romans 8 a number of times as we've had sermon after sermon on Romans 8. But here it is again. Starts with verse 5 and we'll run it through 13. So Romans 8 5 through 13. Are we good? Here we go. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, the sinful nature desires. Okay, we good? Your mind, that spiritual part, your heart and mind are interchangeable there. Your heart and mind. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. That's how Jesus knew who to talk to, how to talk to them, what words to say. Right, brother? What words to say. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful nature is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. You cannot do what God desires through your flesh. If you don't do this filled with the Spirit, and you don't walk in the Spirit, you're not doing what God wants. And it does not matter what you do. It is of no value whatsoever. Think about that as you go through life every day. Those controlled by the simple nature cannot, cannot, cannot please God. The 13, is that right? Mm -hmm. You, however, are controlled not by the simple nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. So, it's, so I go back to your salvation. Prove it. 
But if Christ is in you, your body is dead. So what was once a dead spirit comes to life, softens, and the body, which was once alive, goes hard and dies. That's what it looks like. It's not both. The two cannot commingle. That's called lukewarm. It gets you nowhere. The two cannot commingle. Where am I? Ten. Ten. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if your spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. <laughs> get alive, folks. Get alive. You see here this thing? Get alive. Get alive. When That's going to be my new saying. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know. It is. It's going to be my new saying. Name some things about the heart. Uh, he's heartless. Or name some other things. Give me some phrases about the heart. The kind heart. Kind heart. Good heart. Good hearted. Heartfelt. I'm sorry? Heartfelt. Heartfelt. That's good. Heartfelt. Loving heart. Loving heart. Gratifying. He's lost, he's lost heart. She's lost heart. Heart of gold. What does that mean? Heart of gold. Yeah. Great. Big hearts. Big hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Warm heart. Warm heart. Cold heart. Beautiful. They cold. say my cold hands hearted. are cold. Yeah. If your hands are cold, you've got a warm heart. <laughs> what if your hands are cold? My hands are always cold. So know this. The heart is used for all kinds of things in, in our, you know, conjecturing about all kinds of things, is it not? There's another one for you, fool hearted. <laughs> There's a good one, yeah. That Thank just you. popped up in my head. That's good. But listen, let's just be clear about what heart is and use it in the proper way that it should be used, as God teaches right here. What is your heart? Guard it. Let it drive everything you do. Fill it up every day. Fill it up. Not with the trash, not with the junk. Fill it up with the Holy Spirit. And then watch the fruit go as you go with the journey and deal with other people. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Proverbs 4.23. We're going to jump on that real quick. we got to come at least one proverb, do we not? You got it today. Proverbs 4.23. Oh, I've already checked out before. <laughs> yeah, my glasses. Yeah, 423 says this. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. And that's not what I wanted to read. 23 says, above all else. Okay. Above all else. <laughs> above what? <laughs> Everything else. What does it say? Oh, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do. I like this version. This is from a different version. This is from the easy to read version. It says, above all, be careful what you think because your thoughts can show your life. Yeah. I, 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 let me tell you, eventually the truth comes out. <laughs> it's like that song, Truth Be Told. Your heart's going to show up eventually. You're either going to be angry, envious, jealous, or you're going to have fruits of the Spirit. It's going to show up. It's going to show up whether you're committed to Christ or not. Very, very quick. The aroma, the attitude, the aroma, the attitude of the aroma, it shows up. And it shows up fast. Most people just kind of overlook it, do they not? People of Christ do not overlook it. They have discernment. They see, they know, they feel it. They hurt because of other people that are playing the games, other people that are fake, other people that are pretentious, other people going through life and there's no fruit at all flowing through them. And you can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their eyes. I'm gonna to go to Mark chapter seven. We're gonna wrap it up.
Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 24. Quite good. He went on. Jesus says this. This is what Jesus says. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. Or from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. If you do not guard your heart, it all comes from the heart. Everything comes from the heart. Love and evil. That's why God says, above all else, guard that heart. When you spend time every morning one-on-one -on -one with him and let him fill your heart, oh boy, off you go. Beautiful thing, beautiful thing to watch. I think I'd like to end today with Matthew 15. Matthew 15, start with verse 7. <clears throat> it's the last thing we'll talk about. <laughs> you hypocrites! <laughs> Exclamation point. What a way to end that. What a way to end it today, huh? You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> but their hearts are far from me. Now they still have hearts, do they not? They're not filled. So what comes from their hearts? evil. And you know, it, it can even look like good, but it is not. The only reason it looks like good is because they're putting on a show. They're trying to get you to admire and respect them. They're trying to do something to make you see them in a good light, in a good way. They can strategically manipulate you, not if you're filled with the Spirit. <laughs> they can't manipulate you at all. Where am I? Uh, no. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Listen. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. Jesus' words. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what comes out of his mouth that is what makes him unclean. It comes out of your mouth. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when you when they heard this? Does somebody call you a hypocrite? Does that offend you at all? Mm -hmm. mm. He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Pluck. Leave them. They are blind guides. Leave them. They're blind guides. You're blind leading the blind. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into the pit. Peter said, explain this parable to us. Peter's going, what? <laughs> and, and Jesus says, are you still dull? What does that mean? What does dull mean? Means you're not listening, you're not paying attention. Uh, stupid comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I don't like using that word either. I know. So. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time our preacher, years ago, my, my girls were little bitties. You remember when he used the word stupid? Yeah. My girls went, ah, in the middle of service. <laughs> that word! Yeah. Right in the middle of service. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> That's what it all means. Jesus asked them, don't you see that whatever enters don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these make a man unclean. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. 
But these are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make a man unclean. It's the heart. It's the heart of the matter. You're going to have an opportunity today. You've had an opportunity to worship today in a special way. An opportunity to worship. You have an opportunity today to commit. Commit. Are you a servant of Jesus or not? Do you serve him and him only or not? Are, do you commit this day that every day you're going to get up before your day starts and you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You're going to fill your heart because it is your heart that everything comes from. It's like David read. Everything comes from the heart. And he says, guard it at all costs. Above everything else, guard your heart. And there's no better guarding you can do than filling it up with the Holy Spirit every day. Fill it up with wisdom. Fill it up with love. Fill it up with understanding. Fill it up with insights. As you go through your day, love people. Because you got a discernment. You can see what they need. You can see what word they need for that day. You love them. That love did not come from your flesh. I'll assure you, it's not love that comes from your flesh. That only comes from God. You can love them. And you can say the words they need to hear. The words they need to hear for that day. Walk around with discernment. Walk around with wisdom, understanding, insights. Name one day you don't need to do that. One day you don't do it is when you say something that's terrible. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Edward. It's when you do something that's terrible and stupid. It's from Edward. <laughs> and stupid. Yeah. So I'm going to give you an opportunity for commitment today. It's just commitment. Yeah, you made a commitment to Christ maybe a long time ago. But you look back on it and it's been sloppy lackadaisical with very little guarding of your heart and the stuff that has come out of your mouth. Holy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and the stuff that comes out of your mouth. Come on, folks. It's a commitment. It's intentional. I'm a slave to Christ. Nothing else matters. Nothing. No better thing for you to have in your life. So we're going to stand together. I'm going to